Who's going to count me down? You are. Spent. Fantastic. Lovely. Great. Wonderful. I thought it was fantastic. I haven't read any of the books. Oh. Me neither, by the way. Okay, we'll <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so ladies first. Tilda, what was your awareness of uh, the world of Narnia before making the movie? I knew that there were these books that other people read, and I knew that I wasn't one of them, and that's it. Right. Um, and then at a certain point, Andrew Adamson asked me to think about being in this film that he was making of one of these books, so I read the book, and I thought it was fantastic. Scander, were you an avid reader of the books? I'd read them before I got the audition, and when I got it, I reread it because it was slightly hazy in my mind. And um, I rem I looked more intently at um, Edmund, and yeah, I think he's a cool character. He's the most complex of all the children, isn't he? Because he starts out as a bit of a selfish, self-seeking yeah. rogue, and then becomes more of a rounded person. So mm -hmm. how did you go about that? Um, well, I much preferred sort of being sulkier than smiling and being happy, and um, I thought that was a lot more fun to play. And um, yeah, I I enjoyed playing Edmund. It was it was cool. It was sort of challenging in ways, but there's nothing better than you know the the sense of um, rewardness after you've done something really hard and something really challenging. And tell the look you've given the witch, I just think is fantastic. It's going to become iconic. Mm. And I, I would guess you had a lot to do with how she mm. is dressed and mm. how her hair is and stuff. Mm. I thought it was a great opportunity to break the great cycle of baddies always being dark. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I also thought it was a bit irresponsible these days to make up the epitome of all evil, to, you know, for a big Disney American film to make the epitome of all evil either look like she was Arab or Jewish, uh, which they, there's a really dishonorable tradition of doing that in Hollywood films. And I thought that she should look Aryan, because apart from anything else, she is the ultimate white supremacist. And apart from being a fantasy film, this is also an historical film. It's set, set in the Second World War. And so the epitome of all evil for these children is the, you know, the cause that their father's fighting, which is uh, against fascism and against uh, Nazism. So I thought it was clear that she should be super white. And what about the gowns? Because I became absolutely in, enchanted by them, if you like, because there's at some points where they seem to be padded out, the way mm. they change in colour mm. and all the rest mm. of it. I wanted her to look as if, I mean, the last thing I wanted was for us to see that her dress had been made by hand or even by machine. And I had this fantasy that she would, you know, she's not human. She's a force of evil. And she sort of takes human shape in a slightly sort of, that's what I have to do way. And then goes, oh, I have to wear a dress. And she just scoops up a bit of Narnia, just waterfall or a mountain or smoke or that she's covered in natural substance rather mm. than being covered in material that's been sewn by hand. Um, and the idea was that her, her dress should morph with her mood. So it kind of, when things are going really well, she kind of puffs up like a puffer fish. And when things go really badly, it kind of slims down and goes a bit darker. And I just thought it was right, like those mood things that you get at the fair when you kind of rub them and it tells you whether you're sexy or not. I thought it'd be good to have a dress that did that. Exactly. Scandal, you also get a great costume to wear yeah. when you become almost like a knight of the round table sort of thing. What was it like putting that on? Did it also make you feel like the character? It, yeah, I don't think I'll ever wear something that like that again. Mm -hmm. And that's a bit odd and I can tell that when my friends see it, they're like, oh dude, you're wearing a skirt and <laughs> I'm going to get that. But yeah, it was, they were really surreal in ways. And the coronation scene and some of the scenes in Narnia they were actually, those are really comfortable costumes. It's a kilt. It was comfortable. <laughs> it's moving towards a kilt. And what about using a sword? Did you have to have a bit of a practice? Yeah, that was great because I've always wanted to do that ever since I saw Star Wars. And um, I love <laughs> the idea of just going around and, um, and being able to do it like, properly choreographed instead of just smashing around my room. So when they told me I was going to like learn how to do it, I was ecstatic and I saw the film yesterday and you don't see me doing much but I do do a bit in the background. And Tilda, what about uh, your working with the CGI element of it and what was your final uh, view of how it all looked when it was finally put together, the jigsaw complete? Well the interesting thing about this film is that there was much less CGI than people might think. Um, very little. I think I did one day in front of a green screen or even half a day 
the wonderful thing about this film is that it was made by Andrew Adamson, and Andrew Adamson is Mr. Special Effects. He, you know, was in charge of the special effects in, on Batman. He was, he of course made the Shrek films, and this is his first live action film, and he really wanted to make it real because, because he can, uh, and he can be quite dismissive of special effects because he can do that too. So, um, it's realer, I think, than a lot of fantasy films we've seen recently. When you see a battle with 6,000 people, very often in the past you've had great, you know, swathes of maybe 50 at a time, replicated, 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 and that's not true in this film. You actually do have 200 people in rubber heads, uh, and the variety of creatures, I think, is really stunning. So we were very often working with real, uh, real people, real creatures. The lion is a magical thing. I mean, that is a lion, isn't it? It's a lion walking between two children, and their hands are in his mane. And I don't know how they did it. They told us they were going to do it, and we all thought they were going to have a very good go at it, and we were prepared to be kind to them when they didn't quite pull it off. But they made a lion out of I don't know what. Uh, it's really extraordinary. It's magical, literally. Thank you. 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 Thank you